The old VW bus is known around the world for various things. Depending on who you ask and where they're from, it could be a hippie cruiser, a military vehicle, a workhorse, or the ultimate camper. One thing is nearly certain though, everyone will have something to say about the original VW Type 2. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel so you can help me take this to the next level. Thank you. Now back to the review. This thing goes by about 30 different names, so I'm not going to touch on all of them, but it's most commonly referred to as the bus in America. The proper term is Volkswagen Type 2. The Type 1 was the Beetle, if you were curious. This is the T1 generation. The T2 came out for the 1968 model year. It had what was called the bay window front end. This is the Splitty. This lasted till 1967 and debuted in 1950. Obviously cars don't look like this anymore. It's weird though to see this massive badge up front. There's not anything really up in your face about it. It's got this innocent, plain look, but something about it is still elegant. Maybe it's just the overall roundness of everything. Uh, these front windows are actually pretty practical. Um, and then you lock them in with some wing nuts and. You can clamp them in to make sure they don't just pop out randomly. You also have no AC in here. You probably didn't expect to get it, but there is a vent right here, an opening for it, and that feeds air into the cabin, and it's decently effective. Want to take your classic VW off-road? The microbus should comply with 9.5 inches of ground clearance, respectable approach and departure angles, and portal axles. Plus. The rear engine design enhances traction for the drive wheels. Real quick, I'd like to thank Royal on the East Side for loaning me this old VW. If you're looking for something new, used, or just plain cool, check them out. Now my first piece of advice if you're looking to buy one of these things is expect it to cost quite a bit if you want the body to be in great shape. Most of these are rusted through, most are going to have rust down here like this one even does rust up here. The underbody is always treacherous. These things are old and they've just been out in the elements and most of them were really used in the early parts of their life. Expect to pay about 25, 40 grand for a decent example here in the US. The most iconic version, the 21 or 23 window Samba version, uh, which just had extra windows at the top and a big sunroof, sometimes called the sunroof deluxe, that is gonna run you $100,000 plus if it's in great condition. I'd also like to take note of how tall this damn thing is. I mean, it's like as tall as me, and it's skinnier than a Volkswagen Golf by four inches. Walking alongside the VW bus, there's not very much to talk about in terms of lines. It's just a big slab. Um, you do got some square windows though, if you like geometry. And uh, this design, it's more aerodynamic than the VW Beetle uh, when we look at drag coefficients. Not to state the obvious here, but with this shape, the rear engine, and a 2,500 pound curb weight, crosswinds will challenge your faith. The windows make this have a train aesthetic. The front ones slide open, and there's a nice smoker window vent thing too. And you want to know what kind of airflow this engine has? Well, it's that. These had uh, overheating problems to say the least. Um, it is a body on frame construction technically. The frames tend to rust on these and this is no exception. The floors are also known to rust through. The major design piece to the Volkswagen bus was the fact that the driver sat over the front wheels. It maximized space on the inside, allowing for this to ride on the same wheelbase and underpinnings as the Volkswagen Beetle. Like I can almost hug the wheels I mean, I really can't, but you could also get this in the Westfalia uh, pop-up camper. But now we're looking at the rear of the Volkswagen bus. And again, not too much to be said. It's flat, it's simple. You got this big freaking bumper right here. And that was about your only safety feature. 
Really. If you're wondering where the engine is, well, here's the engine. VW used to market the microbus as a wagon, and while I don't agree with that description, I do agree with the ambitious decisions that maximize space inside the cabin. Things like the rear engine, rear drive layout, and the whole front seats over the wheels thing. However, the latter made getting into the VW bus quite awkward. So even though this thing is pretty tall, a big issue with this is uh, clocking your head right here and then also climbing over that hump. It's not the most graceful process. Um, and again, the driving position of the Volkswagen bus is, uh, well, like a bus. You sit kind of hunched over the steering wheel most of the time I found. And you know, it's like comfortable to just rest your hands right here. The wheel is just massive. There is no power steering in here. You really don't need it. There's not very much weight over the front wheels. Now the speedometer and the gas gauge are the only readouts that you get. There is no tachometer, even though this is a manual transmission, you just gotta listen to it. Speaking of the shifter, um, it's kind of weirdly close to your knee and low. You're, you're just shifting like this, which is kind of interesting. The clutch pedal also, actually all the pedals are just weird. They're not hinged the same way that uh, I am so used to with every other car and you can see the ground through the pedals. Now, I don't know if they came like that, but this one you can. The uh, floor is actually supposed to be a rubber. It was just able to be hosed out, and it's part of what made this thing so practical. Another part of what made it so practical is that uh, there is no insulation in here. Your knees, where there would normally be plastic and insulation and just all these big components, of the interior that take up space. This just doesn't have that. So my knees, I mean, I've got plenty of room everywhere. Well, relative to its punitive dimensions, it is 28 inches shorter in length than a Honda Pilot. My knees don't have an excess of room, but I'm 6'3", so this is great for the time period. The seats are comfortable too. They feel like a springy futon. For your convenience, the bus also has a heater. Well, kind of. It takes heat from the exhaust up to the front and disperses it at either your feet or the windshield. Luxury at its peak. You can also choose where to send air. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you have a vent right out here uh, in the front of the windscreen. You can choose to send the air to the back or to the front right here. There was also an old timey single din sapphire radio in here when it was new. This one just has a Pioneer unit. Everything that you interact with does feel cool and uh, satisfying, uh, especially the lights, the emergency light, the turning signal. This truly is the minimalist approach to everything. In addition to the clickiness of everything, a big advantage to the bus was its customizability. It's a blank slate. The people that had this put in like a wicker flooring and you know, they tried to keep it pretty stock, but you know, people put, make these into campers, uh, really extreme ones at that too. You know, you could get bench seats. You could make this a utilitarian vehicle. These came in pickup trucks. The Volkswagen Type 2 could really be just about anything you wanted it to be. And the multi-purpose nature of the bus really shines through in the back seat. I've got a ton of space. Um, is it comfortable? You do have a nice little side elbow rest here. Support is not Super great. Obviously you don't have any adjustability back here. The nice thing is just really the size of it. These were synonymous with hippie gatherings and uh, a lot of young people hopping into the back of these things and taking them across the country. The aforementioned Westphalia edition slept four. Other people have flipped the middle row around, added fridges, tables, you could get panel van versions, truck versions are kind of rare due to the chicken tax, but you could get them too. You could take out the seats as well. One interesting thing you couldn't do was lock the doors from the inside, so don't piss off pedestrians. As I previously mentioned, this thing rides on a Beetle platform. It's shorter in length and width than a new Golf, yet as a passenger, it feels like it has more room than a VW Atlas. Um, it's amazing how much you can fit in this little package when you don't have to adhere to really any safety regulations. One thing I should note, there are no cup holders in here. I guess stay thirsty, my friends. I like how the, the person who owned this originally uh, actually left 
like a mask in here and they left all these stickers and uh, you know I like the uh, wicker and the wood look placed around the cabin it's it's pretty cool um, these normally were just barren as I mentioned before it was really just about being the most practical vehicle and it really was and there's so many different configurations that I you know I can't talk about them all now I, I can imagine having that a uh, sunroof deluxe or the Samba would be really cool because you had the massive opening here and the 21 windows or the 23 windows so you could look out of everything. It was pretty sweet and I can just imagine how cool that would be to ride in the back of one of those. All right, so back here we have a spare tire and uh, a somewhat useful space. It's just a big box. This is still a decent amount of space considering that there's a whole engine below me. I could probably go on for days about how special and cool this interior feels, but I think you guys have probably waited long enough. Let's see how this thing drives. The unit propelling the original VW bus, the Type 2, the transporter, whatever you want to call it, was a 1100cc flat four and they've all they were all flat fours and they were all air cooled one of the bigger issues with this thing was cooling yeah ventilation to the back was not great and air cooled engines are at a disadvantage to begin with this being a cult classic there are remedies out there to improve this but the t2 improved the design overall now this engine is the 1600 this is going to have around 60 horsepower the 1.5 liter had a whopping 54. First and foremost, this car isn't about speed. It's going to feel anemic with any of its engines. Some just might be less hazardous. Also, finding specific information on all these engines is difficult. Confirming its validity is even harder. So I'm leaving some things out here. From what I have found, the 1.6 liter dual port engine in here is on the rare side. The T2 generation saw way more 1600s. There was also a 1.2 liter engine in here before 1963 that put out 30 to 40 horsepower in its life cycle. Which is, again, much better than the 25 that originally came in here. Now they geared these things so aggressively that they were actually able to have a payload capacity of 1,600 pounds. And you could actually get them to, to have a payload capacity of 2,000 pounds uh, with the heavier duty unit. Now the transmission was a four speed, always a four speed manual transmission. Um, and in its age, the synchros have kind of started to wear out a little bit. It kind of just it grinds a little bit into to gears if it's not perfectly uh, rev matched. We'll try an acceleration run whenever I feel safe. We got two people in the car, some gear, and... <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. And that's, hey, that's 40. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's so dramatic. 50. All right, and there's a hill. I didn't quite get to 60 before I started going downhill. 1.5 liter is much more common and at its best pumped out 53 old tiny horses not to be confused with the slightly different new tiny horses so my roughly 60 horsepower tester is the split window bus in its highest performing kit this being a four speed the shift pattern is different from most cars first is not left and up it is just straight up third is also to the right and up just a warning for those who have never driven a four-speed like myself before this review. The clutch is surprisingly easy to use, and it didn't result in much fatigue. The shifter itself has some long throws and is pretty vague. Sometimes I complain about this in new cars, but with the bus, I mean it. Driving one of these after you drive a newer manual transmission feels like leaving the bathroom at 5 a.m. You shut off the lights, and your eyes haven't acclimated to the darkness yet, and then you start running into door frames, stepping on dogs. That's what shifting the bus feels like at first. Once your eyes start to adjust, you can make your way back to bed. It's still dark, but you're okay with it. I'm trying to imagine somebody taking this across the country. And you know, if you're going 40, that's what I'm doing right now. I could see it, I got a window open. It's a little loud in here, but it's nothing crazy. The thing that really is unnerving is the brakes. 
four-wheel drums, and man, you gotta stomp them bitches. And you gotta use those too, because if you take a corner a little bit too fast in here, there's not body roll, there's body tip. Which I also found in the Land Rover 90. Still, I didn't find the body roll to be as spooky as the steering itself. Now I'm climbing a hill right now, it's actually not too bad. Now I'm not trying to accelerate anymore. And I was in third, so. Now we're just on the open road where this thing was supposed to be at home. And, uh, you know, I'm doing 50. Seeing big trucks though, I mean, it's scary because the steering has like, at speed, four inches of play. So, you know, weaving in and out of tight spaces at speed is not a fun time. Yeah, no. <laughs> really, this thing is, it is most comfortable going about 40, 45, down just regular roads. On the highway, it's gonna be a little intimidating, especially when you remember, oh, I don't have much in terms of safety. I just have a, a thin metal coffin around me, and that's about it. You wanna be a safer driver? The VW bus is a motivational proposition. You will become much more careful when your knees and face become a part of the car's crumple zone. I won't fixate on this anymore, but seriously, there is nothing between you and whatever you hit. The T2 apparently had a special frame design to improve safety, but still, I understand why they don't make them like they used to in this case. Due to that unsafe position at the head of the vehicle, taking corners in the bus is a different experience from really about any other car. You feel like you're driving this in third person, like you're sitting on top of it. It's the most objective driving experience because you're sitting over the front wheels. Now the nice thing is, is uh, the ride comfort is surprisingly forgiving. Imperfections in the road will not be resulted in a jarring motion, more so a uh, wave motion. You just kind of bounce your way through all the obstacles. So now that I'm doing 50, I'm constantly looking for another gear. And if you think about it, I mean, this thing was released back in, you know, 1950. Highways really didn't exist. There was no need to be traveling at 65 uh, miles per hour. The VW bus was designed to be extremely practical while at the same time reaping the benefits of the old VW Beetle. It was small, reliable-ish, but super easy and inexpensive to maintain. Young and old people alike could hop into one of these things and take their friends or family on a journey. They were attainable for a lot of people and approachable for many drivers. It was just open and airy. It's super easy to drive even with the manual transmission. For a cross-country trip or something like that, this would be a ton of fun. I'm really genuinely surprised at how comfortable this thing is. Um, going over this kind of more rough, unsettling road, I have no problem. Again, you just kind of bounce and putter your way along. The steering, you know, even though it's not power, it, once you're at speed, it becomes really light. I mean, there's almost no need for power steering in a vehicle like this, uh, especially when you have a wheel that's just massive. Something that I wish this had was AC. Now, that would drain more power from the already starved engine, but with the windows rolled up, this 90 degree weather about killed me during the shoot. Despite this, it still brings a smile to your face no matter what. And that's a big aspect of owning one of these things. They just seem to make everyone happy. Maybe they always saw them as a kid in magazines, or maybe they were, you know, maybe they're older now and they remember them when people were actually driving them or in the 60s and 70s. And it's just, it's gonna bring back memories. Just today, whenever I went out and got some food, some woman came in. Uh, she didn't buy any food. She just came in to talk to my girlfriend and my camera guy and me about this. I could tell through the emotion on her face that she was thrilled to see it on the road. And this is one of those cars that, you know, everybody just has an opinion on it. With the Defender, not everybody knew what it was. To some, it just looked like a Jeep or, you know, you have old classic Chevys and Cadillacs that, you know, yeah, they look cool, they look like the era. But the average person can't identify a vast majority of those cars by name. 
Now, add to this list in the comments section, but if I had to name five cars that everyone in America could I identify, I'd say Mustang, Jeep, Beetle, Humvee, and the VW bus. If you show me one of these, or really just about anybody, they're gonna say, oh, that's a, that's a Volkswagen bus. That's a hippie van. That's the hippie van. Or, you know, something along the lines of that. And so getting to drive it, yeah, I mean, could I say that I, oh, I'm disappointed in how it handles? Well, no, I mean, I'm not disappointed, but it's fun um, in the way that it's a complete throwback. But you know, you can see I'm constantly checking, is there somebody behind me? It's kind of treacherous to be driving this thing. If you're looking to bring one back, it's also a pretty practical vehicle. Even though it came out 60 years ago, you can fit seven people in here. It's geared so strongly that, yeah, I mean, you're not gonna go fast, but you can take you and a few friends or you and your family out and camp with it. It's not actually that bad off-road. It's got some traction to it. You're gonna get good gas mileage while doing it, and if something goes wrong, it's relatively easy to fix it. VW Type 2, T1, Microbus, Hippie Van, Transporter, whatever you wanna call it, is loved by many and its legacy is not purely due to its iconic look and practicality. In a way, I could compare the affection it receives with the love that people have for the Beetle. Nobody I've talked to or heard from has told me that this is the greatest, most capable, or most reliable car. In fact, people usually tell me how it broke down on them. But that story usually continues with, and that's how I learned how to tune a carburetor, change a spark plug, a clutch, gaskets, now, I'm not trying to undermine their longevity because these were durable, but VW bus ownership is a labor of love. People bonded with their VWs. And since this was a vehicle that could carry a lot of passengers, they also formed memories with those that rode with them. They remember all the places they took it. Maybe they never even owned one, or maybe they never even rode in one. They just saw the distinctive minimalist style as a kid and remembered it ever since, like me. While this carries negative connotations with some, it was also a symbol of rock and roll, anti-war, and 60s activism here in the US, all of which brings strong memories. The nice thing about the VW bus as a 60-year-old classic is that most of them were truly used in their previous lives. If you buy one, you can most likely continue the legacy without fearing that you're ruining something pristine. If it breaks, fix it, move on, just like your relatives did. Be sure to stretch its legs every now and then, because it'll be fun for you and even some onlookers. After all, the VW bus is a blast from the past that everyone seems to enjoy. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.